So in the last video, we talked about three distinct cases uh, that we could see and be able to find the area of a triangle. So we have the classic case, um, case one, where we're given the base and the height, and this area formula is given by the one that we all remember from grade school, um, the area equals one half times the base times the height. We also saw that if we're given two sides and the angle in between those two sides, which we call the included angle, the area is equal to one half times AB times the sine of theta. And then this last case was interesting. Um, we have a specific formula for computing the area when we're given three sides. That's called Heron's formula, and it hinges on finding the semi-perimeter, which is just the sum of all the sides of the triangle divided by two. And that formula is circled here. So what about this case for? Those are going to be when we just have arbitrary triangles. So we're not going to be given three sides or two sides and the included angle or even the base and the height. But we can use what we've learned this chapter um, or this, uh, yeah, this chapter, uh, namely with the law of sines and the law of cosines to figure out how to use those formulas that we used last video. So here's example one. We want to find the area of the triangle and we're given alpha equals 39, A equals 9.4, and B equals 7.2. So let's see, we've got alpha, we've got A, and we've got B. So we're very close to, we've got two sides, which makes me think we should use the area formula with two sides and an included angle. But the included angle here is not alpha. The included angle between A and B is going to be this angle gamma. So what we want to do is solve for gamma and then use that area formula. To solve for gamma, there's a couple of steps. The first step is we need to be able to use the law of sines to find it. Now, to use the law of sines, we need information about the angle and the side that's opposite it. We don't know anything about C, so we're going to go ahead and find beta first because we do know B. So we use the law of sines to find beta. So we get the following. We know that from the law of sines, sine of alpha over A is equal to the sine of beta over B. Now, if we substitute what we know, we know that the sine of 39 degrees over 9.4 is equal to the sine of beta, which is unknown, over 7.2. So if we solve or cross multiply, we get 7.2 times the sine of 39 degrees is equal to 9.4 times the sine of beta. And if we keep going, we get that the sine of beta is equal to 7.2 times the sine of 39 degrees divided by 9.4. Now, if we do sine inverse to both sides, we're going to get what beta is equal to. So I'll go ahead and compute that after I finish writing this down. So we would get sine, uh, we get 7.2 times the sine of 39 degrees divided by 9.4. And if I take the sine inverse of that, I get 28.8182. Let's see, didn't mean to do that. 8182. And that's approximately 29 degrees. We'll go ahead and round to the next whole number. So we found beta. Great. So we know now that this is 29 degrees. We know from the beginning this is 39 degrees. And now we want to find gamma because that's the angle in between our two sides that we were given. So to find gamma, we are going to subtract the sum of alpha and beta from 180. So gamma is equal to 180 minus the sum of alpha and beta. So it's 180 minus 39 degrees plus 29 degrees. So we're going to get 180 minus 68 degrees. And so finally, we're just going to get that gamma is equal to 112 degrees. Now, we have, um, if you kind of remember um, what it looked like, we have A is 9.1, we have B is 7.2, we have this is 112, and so we have enough to find the area using our formula. So last step, 
is to find the area. So to do that, we use that A is equal to 1 half um, A times B times the sine of theta. And our theta here is going to be gamma. So that's what we'll substitute there. And then once we simplify that, we will have everything we need. So I'm going to get 9.1 times 7.2 is equal to 65.52. And it looks like I left off the sign in my uh, sign above. So it's the sine of 112. And that comes down. And now I just want to write that, uh, calculate that. So... you get 30.3745, and that's approximately 30.4 feet squared as our area, round into the nearest decimal. Okay, so next example, um, find the area of the triangle with alpha equals 115 degrees and beta equals 25, and C equals 14.2. So let's see, we've got alpha, is 115 degrees, we know that beta is 25 degrees, and we know C is 14.2. So we've got two angles um, and one side. So how do we get to two sides and one angle? Well, let's see. We have uh, C, so if we could find B or A, we would be able to use alpha or beta as the included angle between those two side lengths. So the only way that we can do that um, is to find A or B. But in order to find A or B, we are going to need to use the law of sines. And the law of sines says that we need an angle and the side opposite one of those angles. So we need to find gamma because the only side we have is C. So our first order of business is to find gamma. Once again, we're finding gamma because it is the angle opposite of our side length C. So to find gamma, we're just going to do gamma is equal to 180 minus the sum of alpha and beta. Um, and so we get that gamma is equal to 180 degrees minus 115 plus 25. So it's equal to 180 minus 140. So it's equal to 40 degrees. So this gamma is equal to 40 degrees. So now we can use the law of sines to find A or B. Um, you know, let's go ahead and find A. Just because. So if we go ahead and try to find A, we start with the law of sines that says that the sine of alpha over A, which is our unknown quantity, is equal to the sine of gamma, which we just found, over C. So if we substitute into that formula, we get that the sine of 115 degrees over A, our unknown quantity, is equal to the sine of 40 degrees over 14.2. So then we get that A is equal to 14.2 times the sine of 115 degrees divided by the sine of 40 degrees. And if we simplify that, we get the following. We get that A is equal to 20.0215, so approximately 20.0 oh since we're rounding the side lengths to decimal places okay so we've got that this is 20.0 and so we've got two sides and the included angle beta and so that's all we need to find the area so we get that the area is equal to one half a times c this time and the sine of theta where our theta um is is beta. So actually, let me go ahead and just write beta so it's not cause confusion. So we get one half times 20 
times 14.2, and I'm gonna run out of space, so let me move this over a little bit. One half times 20 times 14.2 times the, okay. Still not working, let's just go to the next slide to finish this out. So the area is equal to one half And if we compute this, we get 1 half times 284 times the sine of 25. And to finally finish this out, multiply by the sine of 25, divide by 2, we get the area is equal to 60.0118. And so that's approximately 60.0 feet squared.